I have a question for you. Can the nervous system control everything in our life? For instance, let's say a girl would like to have a baby. Can she just think about it and become pregnant? Or let's say she does not want to go the full nine months term of pregnancy. So can she just think about it and give birth? Or let's say this little infant wants to grow up fast. Can the infant just think about it and start growing up into an adult? Or can the adult just think about it and turn old immediately? You and I know the answer to that question, right? We can't. The reason is because we have another system. And we're going to talk about that system in this video. Hello, I'm Vignes from BioWorld and this is Hormones. This is 9.2a STPM syllabus on mechanism of steroid and non-steroid hormones. In this video, I shall be talking about steroid hormones. You've been introduced to hormones in your SPM syllabus, where you know hormones are chemicals. They are made up of two types of chemicals, that is either steroids or peptides. Peptides here meaning protein. So a steroid hormone can also be called a non-peptide hormone, and a peptide hormone can be called a non-steroid hormone. Whichever type of chemical it is, they are all secreted by special organs called the endocrine glands. The endocrine glands are located in a few places in our body. For example, in our brain, we have the pituitary gland. At our throat, we have the thyroid gland. Sitting above our kidney, we have the adrenal glands. And then we have this one very special endocrine gland, the pancreas. It's special because it is also an exocrine gland, meaning that it not only synthesizes hormones, it can also synthesize enzymes. And then if you are a male, you have the testis. And if you are a female, you will have the ovary. So these are the glands that secrete these hormones. we see how these hormones are transported. Now the hormones have to be transported by blood because they are not directly connected to the organs. So for example here, the endocrine gland will carry out exocytosis to release the hormone and the hormone will then diffuse into the blood where the blood will transport it to target organs. Target organs are organs that have cells with specific receptors that can bind to the hormone. So for example here, I have two target organs with the specific cells having different receptors. So when the hormone arrives, the hormone will bind to the receptor that fits its structure. When the binding occurs, a physiological process occurs. This physiological process can include what I mentioned just now, for example, growth, reproduction, as well as homeostasis. Now that you know hormones in general, let's look at the specific information on steroid hormones. As I mentioned earlier, steroid hormones have another name that is non-peptide hormones. The reason clearly is because steroid hormones are synthesized from cholesterol. 
cholesterol is the precursor to all steroid hormones. You are familiar with the structure of cholesterol since you were introduced to this structure under the topic of lipid in semester 1. So you can see since it is compact, the steroid hormones are small. And since they originate from cholesterol, the steroid hormones are lipid soluble. We will later see how these two characteristics of the steroid hormone are going to enable them to function at the cell structure. Now, steroid hormones also have a long-term effect, whereby once the body has synthesized these hormones and these hormones arrive at the target cell, the effect of the hormone can last between hours to days. This is considered long-term for a chemical. Now, let me share with you some examples of steroid hormones. Most of the time, steroid hormones are sex hormones, such as estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. Estrogen and progesterone are synthesized by the female ovary, while the testosterone is synthesized by the male testis. So you see these hormones, once they are synthesized, the effect from the presence of this hormone is long-term in our reproductive system. Besides being involved with the sex hormones, Steroid hormones are also involved in some homeostatic reactions. These hormones include cortisol and aldosterone. Both of these hormones are synthesized by the adrenal gland. Cortisol is necessary for homeostasis of blood sugar levels while the aldosterone is necessary for the regulation of salt concentration in our blood. Now, let's learn how the steroid hormone works at its target organ. To help with the explanation, I'm going to use specific examples such as the ovary that secretes the hormone estrogen and this hormone will be transported by blood to its target organ, that is the endometrium, located in the uterus. The cells will have specific receptors to the hormone so that when the hormone binds to the receptor, the hormone is able to carry out its physiological function, that is to thicken the wall of the endometrium that has become thinner due to menstruation. I'd like to point out to you students that essay questions on this topic normally will state the name of the hormone. So to answer the essay, there are two important things you must know. First, you must be able to identify whether the hormone is a steroid hormone or a peptide hormone. And second, you must know the physiological function of that hormone. I will move on in the explanation and you will see why it's necessary to know the function. So next, we magnify this picture for more detail. This is the target cell, the endometrium cell with the receptor. Now, the cell will of course have a nucleus and there is something that is different in the target cells of steroid hormone. That is the location of the receptor. The target cells of steroid hormones do not have their receptor on the plasma membrane. 
Instead, the receptors are located either in the cytoplasm or in the nucleoplasm. So when you are answering your essay question, you can choose to answer either cytoplasm, receptor in the cytoplasm, or receptor in the nucleoplasm. Choose one. Now what will happen is the hormone estrogen, which is a steroid hormone, has specific characteristic. That is, it is small and lipid soluble. Now you know that these two characteristics will enable the hormone to diffuse by simple diffusion across the plasma membrane. Because the plasma membrane, remember, is permeable to lipid soluble molecules. Now, the estrogen will diffuse across the plasma membrane and across the nuclear membrane to bind with the receptor located in the nucleoplasm. Once the hormone is able to bind to the receptor, then we say that it has formed a hormone receptor complex. So here, I have magnified or focused onto the nucleus. The hormone receptor complex is here. And what else can you find in the nucleus? Definitely the DNA. So you see, the hormone receptor complex will bind to a certain protein located at the DNA. By binding, it will actually activate the process of transcription in the DNA. Transcription is when part of the DNA is copied to form an mRNA, the messenger RNA. Then the messenger RNA will move out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm through the nuclear pore. And you find at the cytoplasm, the ribosomes will begin to carry out the process of translation to synthesize a protein. Now, this process can involve many ribosomes, so they can also call it a polysome, polyribosome. The ribosome will read the genetic code and translate it into a polypeptide. So that means the estrogen hormone has taken some recipe in the DNA of the endometrium cell to synthesize endometrial tissues. So this polypeptide or protein will be the proteins that line the layer of the uterus. So the proteins, as I said, for this example, is a structural protein that will thicken the endometrium wall. But depending on the type of hormone, the protein could also be a transport protein. For example, if say the question is about the hormone aldosterone, then the protein will be a channel protein for the transport of sodium at the kidney. Protein could also be enzymatic. For example, let's say the hormone is cortisol. Then the enzyme, or oh sorry, the hormone will synthesize the enzyme that is necessary to break down glycogen. Finally, we see the hormone could also synthesize proteins that will go on to activate other genes in our cell.
So that is why you see, if you want to write a good essay, you should be able to relate one of these examples to the specific hormone's physiological function. So that is the story of how a steroid hormone functions at its target cell. So in my next video, I shall talk to you about the non-steroid hormones. See you soon. Bye-bye.